So next what we're going to do is the impact effort grid. And this is a way of simplifying exactly what you should do next and doing a bit of a, a, a time analysis and cost benefit analysis in a way that's quick and, and fairly intuitive. So what we're looking here is for the amount of impact or effort any one of your projects or ideas is going to actually take to get it done, to implement and, and get it done. And you can use the impact effort grid whenever you feel like you have, you have too many things going on and you're wanting to prioritize, you're wanting to find some of the quick wins, you're wanting to uh, get a glimpse of like how many things are you know, really worth your time versus not worth your time or what you can get done right now versus things that are a major project. So the first thing that you're gonna do is use some, some sticky notes. So you're getting a little pile of sticky notes and all of the sticky notes, what you wanna put on each one of these sticky notes is, you can, you can do this in two ways. You can do this um, for A, uh, a whole project that you're working on, or you can do it on all different ideas uh, to solve a problem. And you can do this before you do it with a project. So if we use the example of ideas to solve a problem, uh, I'll just use an example from one of the course members yesterday. So one of my course members in yoga health coaching, she was saying like, I've tapped my existing network. I've tapped my existing list. People know what I do. They know what I offer, but I'm not really getting enough leads. So the problem here is I don't have enough leads. So how she would use these sticky notes is she would, she would take some time and set a timer. I really recommend like set a timer just to get it all down in a certain period of time. So if you need 20 minutes, you need 20 minutes. If you need an hour, you need an hour. Depending on the size of the problem, uh, you might need more or less time. So certain, certain ways that she might solve this problem are one, she, she, might, uh, she might do some research. She might do a little bit of research on on how to get leads. Uh, she might talk to some people. She might have a conversation uh, with someone who doesn't have this problem, who's come to the other side of, of this problem to figure out, you know, what are some of the more of the ideas that she might need to, to be implementing. Uh, she might do, she might look into, you know, a, her network that she wants to have in the future and just actually ideate exactly on who, like what network uh, she actually wants to have. So she might do basically like a, a network uh, top 10 let list. Uh, she might research influencers and decide to create an influencer program uh, where people, uh, she's, she's an influencer, she's working with other influencers that are all basically trading each other's exposure around. Uh, another idea she might have is maybe some, I get this all the time, people are like, oh, I know, I'll write a book, and when I have a book, I'll have more exposure. Um, another idea might be, oh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to develop my LinkedIn uh, account and profile and start networking. And you know, this goes on and on. And, and all she's doing here is she's, she's, she's getting all of the ideas to solve a problem down. Now, if you're already doing this and you're working in a project, you're putting down like all of the strategies that you've already decided are going to work. Uh, and, you're, and you're now just putting them, all those different strategies down on sticky notes. And you're, you're creating a ton of these sticky notes that help you get a sense of exactly how much effort is going to go into each of these ideas and how much impact you can expect to get from each of these ideas. Now, what I find in doing this is like whenever I'm stuck in something or I have too much going on and I need to prioritize, those are all good reasons to use the impact and effort grid. Okay, so back to, we'll call her Jane, back to Jane needing more uh, exposure in. She could also do, we could say she could run some ads. She could do like, she could run Facebook ads uh, into an opt-in or into a funnel. This is really common. You've all done it where you click on an ad and then all of a sudden you're giving someone your email and then you're getting something in exchange for giving them your email. Um, she could create a small product 
and then she could do Facebook ads to to that or Google ads or or whatnot or she could use the network or whatnot but she could create a product that helps get leads into a funnel so what I'm showing is that there's like a bunch of different ideas here that she's getting down and and that's really the most important thing is, is when you do this part with the sticky notes so part one is sticky notes is you're doing one idea per note and this is really important like you want to you want to have a whole pile of these they don't have to be good ideas but you just want one idea per sticky note and the reason is then we're going to start to move these sticky notes around so I'm going to show you how to do this on a computer and I do this actually a lot on my I'm sorry on a tablet I use good notes on my tablet and I'll do this because I can I can highlight something and I can I can move it around uh, those of you who don't have a tablet with a pen then you would just want to do this old school style and it's great to just do it old school style anyways because then you can put it all on a piece of paper so the way that you're gonna take these ideas that you've written down and apply it I'm just gonna show you uh, how the impact effort grid works so the impact that's on this axis from it's on the x-axis so low impact is gonna be down here at the bottom and high impact is here at the top so you can't really see it but low is down here and high that's this one up here so the the impact of an idea so if, if if Jane is going through this and she's like actually making a list of who I actually want to be networking with in the future making that list uh, that's a really that's a really good idea now as soon as she's starting to think about this idea more she's like okay I need to create a list of who I want to be networking with that also has lists uh, that we can pass traffic back and forth that's one idea of just writing the list down but what we might find with this too is that there's another idea of like developing actually developing the network of her top 10 and what we find with that is like that's gonna take probably a lot more it's gonna take a lot more effort and that's where you see this grid down here so low effort is on the bottom left and high effort this is on the bottom right so what we have is these different grids so something that's gonna that's gonna be a lot of impact and a lot of effort that's gonna be in the top right so yeah and the reason it says high effort high impact maybe is because there's a lot of unknowns with bigger projects now if I look at this one of developing the network of her top 10 that's gonna take in my experience uh, that takes a little bit of time actually it can take quite a bit of time uh, but it has a long tail effect meaning that it's it's a gift that can keep giving back and that's really what I've noticed in in my career is that you know developing networks and being uh, you know having reciprocity with other people where hey I'll, I'll you know can I do this for you and then maybe down the road you'll, you can do this for me uh, it's great you know it's great to, to do that and if that's the strategy that Jane wants to pursue then even though it's high effort it's still it's still probably a really good use of her time okay now there's a sweet spot in here which is that which is the high effort sorry is the high impact and low effort and so if we go back to Jane's list for her to do a, some research for her to have a conversation with someone uh, that's all gonna probably fall into this high impact low effort often when we're just getting better ideas and learning lessons from other people's lessons learned very very high impact meaning we won't waste as much time down the road uh, and yet pretty low effort and in, in, in a low amount of time so that would all go in that category if we look at writing a book down here so writing a book there's a lot of unknowns um, I've written a few books and you know to say whether or not they help for lead generation it's going to depend on publisher book sales the amount of marketing that you do anyway so if you're not that good at marketing already and don't have enough leads coming in to say that writing a book would help uh, high effort low impact is where I would put that uh, it's, it's not a no impact it could some people might say you know what no that's actually gonna fall into high effort high impact right 
uh, and therefore it might be it really might be it right really might be worth it the point is you're trying to evaluate and if you don't know if writing a book is going to be high or low impact then one of the ideas that you might have before you decide to write a book is to do research on asking people how much did writing your book help you drive leads um, and again if we're there then we're back in that idea would go here under high impact and low effort because it's a lot easier to talk to a bunch of people about whether or not their books help drive leads uh, and if so how they and what they needed to do for actually those books to drive leads uh, versus like writing a book and hoping that it will it will drive leads all right now many of you are thinking potentially like actually your books did help me get into a course so it did drive leads so great um, in which case it was high effort and anti-impact so this is really a sorting tool now let's say uh, Facebook ads and opt-in so what this would mean it's interesting Facebook ads are uh, the more money I put into Facebook ads the more complex I'm realizing Facebook ads are we have we have uh, two specialists that work on our Facebook ads they're expensive uh, the specialists themselves are expensive the ads themselves are be, then become less expensive but there's a whole thing to that there might be a low ball of just promoting a post or boosting uh, boosting posts boosting post might be something that's actually uh, you know somewhere between high and low impact it might fall in here where it's like potentially medium impact but it's pretty low it's pretty low effort compared to like having specialists work on ad accounts uh, actually doing the ad doing the opt-in all of that's probably gonna fall in like the medium effort and could be a fairly could be a fairly high impact and it could be a learning curve over time where eventually it starts to go more and more into a high impact low effort type of activity all right so uh, LinkedIn profile that you know just to get the profile updated and up and then maybe she creates a maybe part of that idea is to to network on LinkedIn for an hour a week let's and I'll just say one hour a week of networking there that one you know that could fall into who knows pretty low effort if it's an hour a week it could be medium to high impact and so that really might be an idea worth testing all right so what you're going to do is you're going to per, you're going to pick a particular goal okay so a particular goal or a project and put down all the ideas that you have to solve this all the strategies that you're using to solve this or all the the projects the sub projects you're using to solve it and then what you're going to do is write them all down on sticky notes and then you're going to put them up on the impact effort grid now this is a this is a really good way to start to characterize like anything that's high impact low effort those are the easy wins those are things like you got to do them and you got to get good at finding the easy wins um, and knocking those out just continually doing those things now the big bets these are the ones that you need to do project management for meaning you've got to really break this down in from the larger project into this into the smaller steps within the smaller steps you might also find some some easy wins um, that are easy for you to take action on right away now the things that are in high effort low impact these are things that you don't do like there's just no reason to do these and so identifying those ahead of time will save you a ton of uh, time and, and money all right so the things that might have good incremental change would be low uh, effort but low impact so you know that's maybe you know for this example that's maybe where like the LinkedIn profile work and networking via LinkedIn or any social media channel might be low impact might be also the low effort and so for small incremental change not not a bad idea so I'll include in this lesson this is a, a printout um, it's also in our it's also in our uh, our workbook for this uh, what I love is explained by Dave Gray he also wrote liminal thinking Dave Gray's a total genius uh, and, and this is just a nice little you know just a nice little way to get all your activities down and start to figure out what is going where all right and then just a quick review of this things that are high impact top 
left. Quick wins. Things that are high effort, high impact, top right. These are major projects that you're gonna to wanna to outline in your project management tool and put time estimations with those things. All right, low impact, high effort, thankless tasks also might be money pits, also might be things that you just decide not to do. And then fill in jobs are things that you might potentially do. If you have limited time, you might just totally focus on activities that are high impact in the yellow and pink section. All right, this is also an exercise in master of you in the actual book. It's in water element. Uh, the reason I have it in water element is I talk about the green, about the green tongue and the river. So if this is a river and you're going down the river uh, and there's rapids in the way, which if there's rapids, that means there's big, there's big rocks. What'll happen is a green tongue will form in the water and it actually does look, it actually looks green, which is pretty cool. And what it's showing is that there's a, a way through, that there's an easier path to get to where you're trying to go, which is the end result of the goal. And all around it, all around the green tongue is basically is, is white water. And white water can tip you upside down, uh, white water can drown you, it can do all sorts of things. And so what I find with this is like that's, in many ways, the impact effort grid is showing you where to orient your activity for high impact and low effort and to and train yourself in that. Even with major projects, you can start to find the quick wins that move the major project along faster. Uh, and again, this tool of the impact effort grid, super big fan. Whenever you're overwhelmed, uh, this is a great thing to do to see like what are the little things you can do to move the thing forward faster whenever you're evaluating like a bigger project and saying well you know how, how much effort is going to go into one or the other and what maybe is not a good use of my time because it's low impact uh, and it's high effort right now that's really when you want to use this tool all right this is one that you're going to keep coming back to again and again uh, i often use this in accompaniment with state the problem so after i've stated the problem or the challenge or the goal so this could be a project, this could be a goal, this could be a challenge, uh, it could be an opportunity, is to then apply it with this. So I like, I'm just gonna write it down here, I like using state the problem first so I really know exactly what I'm addressing in, in the impact effort grid. Yay!